well. With the AOE back. control is allowing them to win all the team fights. So this game Wings has superior team fight already right now with the two opening picks, the Elder Titan and the Void. Whereas MVP wants to, again, like their similar play style. They, they play fast pace, they don't want to rely on cooldowns. They're going to be constantly running at you. That so, seems to be a kind of advantage that Wings have. It's like they, I mean, unless they absolutely go crazy, but yeah, you can keep the draft overall very open ended, very mysterious, if you will. But once that last piece of the puzzle comes yeah. in, then and then you're, it might be too late for the other team. You're like, oh, that's the game plan, yeah. and we don't have an answer. They're very good at exploiting a certain hero remaining. where they understand how how much the hero gives to them during a certain point in the game. Five whereas other teams probably remaining. they look at the draft. Uh, we we got this. We, we should be able to take this game, but we just has that superior understanding. Compared to other teams. MVP wings move into a disruptor pick. will. This is still seeming pretty uh, normal for a wings team here. <laughs> well, I think I do well, like, <laughs> Yeah, for now, but I think I do like Wings' lineup so far. They've created a good amount of separation with the ET, the faceless void, and the disruptor. Those are three decent ways to disengage Ten the fight. Remaining. And that's what you need against MVP. You can't get into those slug fests where you're willing to fight MVP Five nonstop because remaining. I think that's where MVP thrives over almost every other team. Is their ability to somehow get people into thinking, oh, we can keep fighting them, but MVP will eventually break you. We saw that Spirit in the first game against OG, where it looked like OG were going to dominate Wings that game off the, the back of a Timber pick. Saw, but in a game like this, I think Wings, you have to keep your strategy in mind at all times. I mean, and, yes. Okay, so Phoenix... SB, okay. <laughs> if there was a mascot for MVP, would it be Spirit Breaker? It has to be. It's either that Ten or Warlock for sure. A bit. Or March Screaming. March Screaming. <laughs> That's their anthem. Five they seconds roll in remaining. through that curtain with a March Scream and plop right into a Spirit well, Breaker. I, I would say Wings have pretty good heroes against Reserve SB right time. now. Disruptor and the Titan are pretty good. I mean, you don't really want to run into those heroes. It's like easy setup for Stag Storm, like Elder Titan Storm on your teammates. I mean, then again, that's MVP, right? They don't, they don't give a shit. They're just gonna run at you. Three yeah. melee heroes. <laughs> I was thinking about whether or not they would take the SB, but normally, actually, never do you see a bounty hunter and a spirit breaker on the same team. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because you fulfill a similar purpose. You just run around the map and try to create space. But that means you need a really strong, self-sufficient safe laner for MVP Phoenix that can deal with the Void one-on-one. -on -one. And Void is one of those heroes that succeeds very well in a one-on-one -on -one matchup just because of his base. So you want something like Axe Timber. Yeah, you gotta beat him in the lane. MVP and I think for Wings, the gameplay is try to keep as stable of a laning phase as you possibly can with these heroes, and they further that Phantom by picking Jug. Then just get into team fights where you allow Wings MVP to run into you. To <sighs> MVP, last game, they didn't think they, they ran at them hard enough. They're just like, <laughs> there was a spirit breaker down. Guys. <laughs> man, they're, I don't wanna say stubborn, but man, they just. You, we gotta get it right. By the way, are you guys surprised? <laughs> that looks like a normal draft on Wings. Seconds, not a, I, I, not I, all random draft, Ben Wu. I know. What's, what's happening here? This is Five weird for Wings. <laughs> Which is weird in itself. <laughs> Man. They are too Maybe the time. fifth pick is very fishy. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> guys, they don't do stuff like that just to be original. I wonder if MVP's like... I wonder if they're even thinking like, I this is a weird draft. <laughs> Yeah, what did they ban OD? There's only one team that's picked it in the tournament, and they're out. Wings ban. <laughs> Maybe from scrims? Yeah, possibly. Possibly. So MEP is looking for Ten MP's hero. His invoker didn't do so well the last game. Five but seconds still, remaining. I, I mean, I could see it still working for them, you know, because they just have good heroes around the invoker. You want to fight so much in the early game. So you pretty much just pick the same draft? I mean, I don't think they care. <laughs> I do like, though, that they're not doubting themselves, because yeah. you, you can't just switch gears this hard. And I think that this game, their heroes might have a better chance against uh, what Wings have. Like, they're, 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 they're not so mobile, so they can't run away from the PA and the SB. I mean, they do have a lot of lockdown and stun. I can't MVP's believe Phoenix... Turn to and they're one game away from top... or two games away from top three, and... They've done it on the heels of just running the same kind of combination over and over again, and teams just, they never learn. But MV, or Wings might be the team to finally stop that. They're like, we're not going to engage you in this Brawl Fest. We'll play the separation game. Ten I mean, the other place, I was like, you see it coming, but what can you do? Like, it's either you try and fight them, Five like, they're so fast. Like, remaining. you know it's coming, but what do you do? It's either you choose a lineup that fights them, or you, you dodge them. Time. Yeah. It's crazy to think that the winner of this series walks away already with a guarantee of at least, what, $2 million? More than TI 1, 2, 3? Crazy stuff. Looking for the final grab here from MVP. It's going to be Wings who get the last word in this draft, so MVP got to make it count.
I think the Invoker is a different, a decent idea. It's a concept that works pretty decently against a lot of these heroes because they are very mana dependent, but I don't know how much lockdown that you get, and the Jug can just spin out for the most part and keep things going with his healing ward. Now what else would you prefer, Will? Maybe, uh, I, maybe like TA for them? Yeah. T would allow them to go for Roche. really early Roche, yeah. More physical damage, too. I mean, you're on the panel. Normally, a, a Storm Spirit would probably pop up <laughs> right now. It would be pretty bad. Uh, it would get wrecked so hard in this game. Like, every single counter is available. I mean, this one's definitely a tough one, just considering that they did just lose with the Invoker. So it's whether or not you're still confident in running it. You don't think they are? <laughs> it's. I think if they were, they would have picked it by now. Yeah, I, that's a good point. That's a fair point. They're taking a long time, so... We could also run Mag. Like mad at PA with Darkseer. It's not really their style, but have they done it? I don't no, think so. I. And it's cool. Don't rely on their Fabio. First. Okay. Uh, so this is the one-on-one -on -one hero against the yeah the self-sufficient hero that you mentioned. Yeah. Good matchup against the Void for sure. And again, good ro good Roshan potential right now instead of the TA. He's melee. He runs at you. Fits fits the qualifications. <laughs> Melee, 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 right. melee, 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 melee. Are we melee. gonna see a bomb man come out here? That's five melee. Guys, Heroes. they can five they can run a normal draft. Melee. There's they don't have to go. Yeah, just, they they can. They can. What if they run the normal draft and lose them? <laughs> Dude, what world are we living in? <laughs> Dude, that's the real that's the real uh, next level play. Is that everyone's anticipating wings to pick something weird, then they just run at you normal. I feel like Winter Wyvern or something. Seconds. Like I think uh, yeah. is like that's pretty good. They, they don't really have no, but they need a they need a call. Five they run faces void. They, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to do ET off lane. Oh, they have yeah. a normal draft. Look at that. Bat Rider is going to be coming impossible. Out. I don't believe that's a wings draft. No, <laughs> that's not a wings draft. <laughs> Fair enough. Based on the draft before us, gentlemen. Last thoughts before we send it over. I think MVP is going to do it this time. They've learned from their mistake of last game of not having another melee. This time they completed five melee heroes. I'll go with MVP. Wings drafts too normal. <laughs> they go, they have a normal draft, so I go with wings this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for your input. Let's go ahead and send things over now to the side of the stage where we have our casters. It's LD and Mutt. Thanks so much, Dakota. And we are here, one game away for Wings to get top three and to secure two million. And now, of course, MVP Phoenix, Ten they're also one game away me. from going down to the lower bracket. LD, this is a huge game for both teams. Who's going to come out on top in this one? <sighs> I have to go with Wings. They have seen nothing but this exact same strategy from MVP. Because they already that. counted it once. MVP hardly deviated in all slight difference in picks. I think Wings have it. They have great anti-melee counters. They have tons of way to punish tower diving. They have tons of heroes to kite effectively in terms of the Chronosphere, the Sleep, the Glimpse back, the Kinetic Field to catch them. But never count out MVP with the Bounty Hunter. So I do favor Wayne based on draft, but my heart wants MVP to give us that game. We want that game three. We really want that game three. It's been a pretty hype series already. That first game, QO got shut down, couldn't find many targets. He got a couple of kills in the aisle, but that was it. It was him and Ice Ice with the supports. He was bringing them down, but he wasn't doing enough damage to the cores. And again, it was all that kiting coming out. MVP, they didn't have a way to deal with it. Now they're going up against, like you said, the Chrono, the Glimpse, what have you. So Wings, obviously, for the first time in a long time, they go for a normal draft that the, the draft panel talked about. And we'll see how, uh, how well they're able to do this pickup. They're going to run a standard laning setup in addition to a pretty standard draft. We will see the offlane void. He doesn't do well against Ursa at all. He gets zoned pretty hard, so may have to resort to the Iron Talon, go back to the jungle. MVP, confident in their level one. They're very scary with the Iron Shell and the, the gap closing begins. potential they have. So they will secure this top rune. Blink will grab bottom. <laughs> Looks like a Bat Rider potentially just going to go mid. The yeah. Jug starts boots first, will go to the bottom lane. So it's worth mentioning, uh, as good as Ursa is at dealing with Juggernaut, Disruptor, uh, or sorry, uh, with Void, Disruptor and Juggernaut are very good at also punishing a Darkseer off lane. So yes. Forev isn't even going to enter the lane. He just goes straight to the jungle with an Iron Talon. I do like this decision. This is a very strong kill lane against the Darkseer. He should have a sentry. He's dropped one down already. There's another stifling dagger to come through. Plenty of damage on Blink, and he has his bottle already. With no regen, got two cool tangos. He's already up to his bottle. Top lane. Ice Ice is rotated up there as well. Looking for the stomp. Will be successful though. Just trying to zone out. But again, Blink in that mid lane is getting harassed by Febby. 
Yeah, boy, he's taking some serious damage. You know, Winter told me Bounty Hunter's not a good harassing hero anymore, but here I see Pevy just crushing Blake. Radiant's the sentry a bit off to the side, attack. and he's mostly been heading kind of around the, the vision. And now he goes behind the tower. Pevy, just an absolute artist at the early zoning. Batrider has not even seen creeps right now, Mod. Yeah, he really he's can't. Punish. He cannot get any last hits. He can't even walk up. And that Bounty Hunter is doing some serious work in that mid lane with top lane. He getting chased down by Ice Ice. And this is supposed to be a solo matchup. Boy, it's supposed to be it alone, but they've rotated Ice Ice to help out. That means that bottom is, of course, completely free farm going for that Juggernaut. And again, it's going to be Innocence. I'm sure he's getting the pulls off and getting experience as well. Getting to that quick level six, Static Storm will be a very important factor in this game. Of course, leveled up Glimpse as well is not bad either. Beware of the Courier Snipe. Courier is walking down the lane against the Bounty Hunter. It he is might... only a level one bounty. Yeah, Febby can't grab it. He may, he may have seen Febby for a second running by in the mid lane, but that's still very risky. Generally, you will see players walk back to the tier 2, uh, even have a support buried out, or try to juke the courier a bit, wait for the bounty hunter to show himself. So the big deviation, I guess, for Wayne's is that they're running the dual lane with the Elder Titan, as there is a charge towards mid. Two minute rune about to spawn. Dubu, securing that bounty run for QO. There's the Radiant Ward up at the top rune spot that will see the charge coming through, so it's going to be Dubu not, not able to find that kill with that charge. But Yeah, he just wants to get the runes for the team. It's right. About securing the PA's lane, you see the bounty hunter harassing, the charge on mid. The key time where MVP are going to get aggressive, as in a sense, looking to scope out this dark here, might be able to find a first blood of 4 who is very low. Again, I've seen uh, this before. Does that, uh, I don't think he has the TP that he did last uh -oh. time. I think he might just be dead. He's level think... two now. He skills up the Thunder Strike. I don't think he can quite kill Forev yet. He's very with close. a glimpse. Meanwhile, mid, there's also pressure on Blink. Get into the Firefly. Another Cycling Dagger comes out. Plenty of damage. The Shadow Walk. Gonna get the hit up, and Blink will have to be very careful with how he approaches the high ground. Febby now with three stacks dropped. The Sentry down. He might actually be in trouble. Febby's low. Four stacks sticks up, but now blocked by the Creep Wave. Will survive. Blink in trouble. One more right click. It's the dagger that does it for Kiwo. Meanwhile, Innocence, he did end up going for the kill on Forev. He couldn't quite get it. Missed on the Kinetic Field. And now, Mr. 17% in the house. Oh, he gets the best to stop the TP, and Innocence will fall. Double bash there. Secures the kill. Oh, these are the kinds of mistakes that can come back to haunt you against MVP. Who would have thought? Still no boots on Blink. This is going to allow the Bounty Hunter to really punish him, and now Ice Ice, it uh, might be his turn mid. Like you said, QO only goes forward, but Ice Ice, he will go back. Look at that, he's the tower. Another stifling, he's so low. One more right click, and there it is. What <laughs> is what is this team, MVP? How do they make it work? Somehow, some way, Elder Titan's like, yeah, I'll just go farm at the tier one. Little does he know, Bounty Hunter will dive him past it. And ends up not even being punished for it, so... MVP. That magic about their early aggression. They found it here, Mod. Now, the good news for Wings, their cores are farming well, and... Really, where they excel at the counter pressure is in the mid-game, but they gotta get there first. Another charge! Wings could get caught, oh, but this time he will have help with Edison throwing the Thunder Strike. Here's Bevy doing some right click. Sheraton, he's got mana for it, I believe, but I don't think he could go for that kill with Blink around as well. And another hero rotating in. Ice Ice is nearby as well with the Earth um, the stomp. So oh. drop a ward down, and that's going to be the end of it. And Pepe will head out. So walking courier did show itself bottom, I believe. Pepe was wondering if it would take the quicker route back, but wisely, Shadow sends it around the long way. So he won't get the courier snipe just yet. This is a good thing for Wings. They have Shadow as well as the Faces Void in that top lane, farming really well. Let's see, 30 lashes coming up for the Juggernaut. Bebby? Oh, head out. Oh. Saw Dubu deny himself to Roshan at the same time. Sure that he gets back to uh, full health and he can charge somewhere if he, is, if he so chooses to. But that top lane is a matchup we haven't really seen too much of. It's again, Ursa going up against Faith Beyond. CS is roughly even. You really have to anticipate the ganks. The wing supports are not that mobile. The charges coming mid, they have. Two heroes in the area, they might be able to punish this dive mod. Link Dagger comes out again, slowing Blink. How far do they want to go? Into the Firefly and then backing up. They, they That's not dive. MVP Dota. What are you doing, Dubu? Yeah, a little too far, I think, from that, that bat rider. That's... I'm disappointed. But yeah, they definitely should not have dove that with so many heroes missing. And team gonna get that top lane. Another charge coming in, face beyond. He's got the time walk, but it's on level two. And Peach gonna try to get that damage done. Get the time walk coming in, and now he has no way of getting out if they get the bash here. He's actually huge, but the TP's gonna be coming in already from Wings. 
Although it is cancelled, Ice Ice won't end up coming to that top lane. It's mid lane Feppy is still stalking and trying to Oh, the scan found him. Blink is going to get caught by another crit. The stifling dagger and the stop will not save him. Well, Feppy and QO will take some tower hits. So they should be fine for now, but Feppy continues the chase on Ice Ice. He will stay underneath that tier 1 tower. And again, the aggression, the dive, not punished by Wings. Even dropping the ward now, Feppy making great use of the bounty hunter. They would love to kill the Batrider when he goes back to farm stacks. He's had a really rough lane. They're going in again, diving the stop will come out. No! Stop by the shuriken from Febby! Oh dear. Wow. The MVP is happening. He will pop it beyond. He's next. He has to drop the chrono. I don't know if he can stay here. He's not doing nearly enough damage to MP, but Shadow's gonna come in. Omni Slash doesn't bounce to MP. Dubu will try to keep you away. They have to get the bash and they will. Face Beyond walked up. But they're right. flanking. Febby's already here, Mutt. And Face Beyond hides in the tree line right now. He was instead going to go to work on Shadow. No Omni Slash. He's got his cooldown up five seconds. It will come through. Knocks the Illusion Rune. Another stifling dagger. Shadow has the Blade Fury. He's leading them to Faith Beyond, though. Yeah, they're going to run right into each other. Blade Fury comes out. Shadow's low. He will try to right-click him down, and it looks like he will. Come out. Come out, Faith Beyond. Hey, buddy. They found a double kill for QO. Wow. Double kill and uh, what a start for that at Phantom Assassin in this game. The biggest worry, Febby is already level five and a half as a roaming bounty hunter. Three, one, and two. The guy hasn't even seen creeps this game, Mott. They're in for it now. This is this game has become very difficult. He almost says track his level six is gonna be up, and then all of a sudden it's gonna get even harder for, for wings if they continue to you're dive up, to these towers. And you're up against such a good chasing and diving lineup. There's no boots on Ice Ice. Disruptor has no boots either. Two supports that are absolute food. Sentry, Ice Ice gonna get caught. There's gonna be Janata. Shark's coming through. Earth Shock as well. Shark in. Bevy gets another nice. kill dominating. Maybe on TP's in, but it's too late. Attack. It's gonna be level six at like eight, nine minutes here. All right, I guess we're still going, huh? Well, Dubu decides against it. They'll back up together now. Forcey on another TP. The Shadow decides to stop it. This lighting stage is a complete disaster it's for crazy. Wings. It's nuts. And then you have to ask yourself, okay, so Wings have had a really bad waiting stage. How do they come back at this game? Well, the thing is, ideally you want levels on your support so you can set up that big combo. The Static Storm, the Earth Splitter with the Chrono, they're nowhere near that. Radiance Juggernaut can't man fight effectively against an Ursa, even struggles versus Spearbreaker and PA. Doesn't have a way to deal with evasion, the bash goes through your Blade Fury. Also, MVP are very tanky, so Omni Slash doesn't net you many easy kills. It's a delayed Blink Dagger on Batrider. So, perhaps with the haste rune, he can make something happen, but he's your big initiator for this team. You don't want to blow Chrono on solo pickoffs when you know MVP want to fight every five seconds. You need to save that Chrono for a team fight. Innocence getting love tapped by Femi. Comes in with Sonata, they throw the jersey, but does get comes back into the connection, so they have the haste rune. Uh, so it should be up for Blink the Firefly with a sticky napalm. Should be enough, and Femi looks like he will finally fall. Giving away a dominating screw to the Disruptor, that gets him a, a big... Dubu might get caught too! Stop coming out, he will get caught. Damage, Firefly, two stacks I believe as well, and he will fall to quick death from MVP and Wings. Now getting back into it. Over aggression has its costs. Bounty Hunter going down, no big deal. Losing two though. Yeah, they're supports, but... Did its wings, some breathing room. Do you want to point out this game, different build from QO. He's gone back for the Dominator on the Phantom Assassin, so it gives them a little more access to late game. Plus they have track goals. So even if, let's say, wings evens out the game, I like their team fight better. I think they are the better late game lineup with equal farm, but you can maintain a farm lead. Shadow's gonna use that Blade Fury. And QO actually taking a fair bit of damage. Sebi is in. There's just an out of turn. He's gonna come out looking for the Chrono. They'll Radiance find it. Sebi getting caught. If the damage, Shadow is not in range. Heavy. They don't have the detection, it looks like. So, they might go back in on Shadow as they get another crit from that stifling dagger. Febby continues to hound Shadow at this he point. He does have Omni, though. He's gonna use it. Febby kills the healing ward. Was not expecting to turn around for Shadow. Still getting crit. Running low on mana. Plays Fury QO, though. Is in trouble. He's below. They've got the clip. Can they bring him down? And looks like, yeah, Shadow will get a double kill. Meanwhile, at the bottom rune, they do manage to find another Titan. They were going on Blink earlier. MVP overplaying their hand a little bit now, Mott. That's four kills in a row they've given up to Wings. And Wings aren't forcing these. They're not smoking, so they're not committing resources. They're farming during this time. 
Still MVP with the advantage overall when it comes to gold, when it comes to experience, but that was also with the tower. I think the big thing that's going to fuel the next round of aggression for MVP, that's for him. Darkseer, mech about to be completed. He's 500 gold away. Yeah. He's also just been turbo farming in the jungle. He has not come to fights, but round two of the aggression will feature level four ion shells on two heroes with a mech. Wings are going to have to be extremely careful. This this could easily result in multiple towers lost, a Roshan claimed, and another 4 5k gold swing, especially now that track is online. Shadow is going for a farming build. He's built up the battle fury. He's very close to completion. It's going to help out later. And he's doing the Omni side as well, but I don't know if there's five melee heroes. Battle fury just feels so good this game if you get the farm. Might need a bit more, but without the battle fury yet, they're not going to be able to fight up, and they will take those giant pieces in the pit. That overpowering grabs the agent as well. 1100 gold for MP and Dubu. Looks like he's smoked up with Rev right behind him. The deep warding game that's very important Radiant's for MVP. We tower see again the, tower, the ward behind the tier 1 tower bottom. We all already earlier saw the ward place near the big creep camp. Failed sentry wards dotting the map, of one of them leading to a kill earlier bottom, but. In general, MVP Radiant's has kept the vision up. That's very important for Fear Breaker. Yeah, he charges Radiant's and cancels immediately afterwards. There's a sentry there. They can de ward. That, yeah, that ward, Patreon will come and use the Quelling Blade and make sure that ward goes down so MVP lose a little bit of their vision. It's heavy though, doing a pretty good job running around, but the sentries are placed. They see him, it looks like the track's up. Patreon jumping in, Chronos for he'll find him. They need more damage. Heavy, Thunder Strike, and the uh, Kinetic Field as well. Heavy looks like he will fall. Sticks up, comes back in, and he's done. Nothing getting him out of that bad situation. Still MVP overall pulling ahead of net worth there, even when those kills are happening, if they get another tower. The more the towers drop, the harder it is for Waynes to reinforce fights when MVP dies. So if it's even if it looks like nothing's really happening for MVP right now, like Waynes are coming back in the game, it just takes that one fight, and now it's a lot easier to achieve that one fight. Also worth pointing out. Uh, we've been seeing MVP not really grouping up, but they have Aegis. They're going to get Blink on Ursa very soon, and they're looking to fight top. That's easy. There's entries down. Heavy Omni side is going to get caught again, but the mech keeps him alive. Turn around, Shadow Blade Fury not there. Can't get the kill. The stop out for setting up a threat, but here comes the charge, and it is it's already low. Nether Strike coming through Ice Side, taking that damage. Vacuum is on you two, getting Fred a double kill. And now they see Blink, they can get a third. Gonna try to chase him down. Earthshock should be there. MP really wants this to firefly. He misses the Earthshock. Duo looking for the Phantom Strike. He gets it, but no stifling dagger to follow up. And they're out of vision. They do Good. have a great shadow. They have a dash in them too, but can't find it. And then they'll turn their eyes to Shadow. He will play Fury away underneath at Tier 1 Tower. Oh, he, that's a fast battle Fury, considering how much MVP have been running at them. But MP now is playing. So, if they struggled to chase down that third, fourth kill last fight, Radiant's it's not gonna happen this time around. Now they look for the tower. If Juggernaut gets his next couple items, if he gets to late game, Omni Slash could be devastating, but they're pretty tanky even so on MVP. You have Evasion on QO, so those extra auto attacks in between the Omni Slash breaks have a chance to miss. Ursa is very difficult to burst, and you have Spear Breaker. Jug needs a lot of farm if he hopes to, to solo carry this late game. Well, the good news is that I don't think the fish void is that far behind. He's actually only 500 away from the Earth, so he has the potential to be able to right click as well. Charge coming through, he moves, looks at the company, and he's going to be charging down to the bottom lane where Face Beyond will TP home. So he gets out of trouble, but MVP will stay together with this mech like you talked about with the Sages. We'll see how much they can get done. They look to dive again with Blink down, Fire flying away. This is the Blink Dagger debut. I don't think Wayne's have seen it yet. I think so. He's, He's lurking in the trees. trees. Yeah. He's gonna walk out now. Still no vision there. I don't think I saw it. He's gonna go to the ancient sack. And that's a really important point. There is just no vision for Wayne's right now on, the, on their side of the map. It's all pop. So they're not really able to farm much. They might get caught here, Maud. Smoke. Innocence will be the first to be caught. MP jumps right in. Good static storm, though, still. Innocence will fall to a track kill. To Chrono only onto one. And safety on the beat. Watch that beat. He breaks him in the last of them. He will surely fall first. MP might be second, but coming in is duo. MP somehow still alive, but finally falls. Vacuum is safety on time walking away. Nice wing dagger. They're diving underneath the tier two. On these sides, jump through, but it's not enough. Stop on top. Is it? And they get the kill. Dubu is low, and finally will fall. MP might be next. He already lost his agency, our shot will not help him, and Wings turn three. That was huge from Ice Ice. What a great three hero stomp. Resets the fight, it buys time for Shadow's Blade Fury to cool down, and completely turns the engagement.
Also worth mentioning there, the Chrono didn't even catch the Ursa. It looked like it was going to be really bad, but MVP losing Febby very early in the fight, so they didn't get those additional tracks out. Oh, Febby, you're underneath the sentry. Dyer's Not anymore, top though. You will make it out, Shadow. He's going to scope the blade here anyway. Stop. Link's coming in as well. He's taking A-bomb, Febby. All right, maybe he is dead. He's trying to stick up, but it's Winks again, finding another kill, and this will almost dead the tower, I would imagine. The tier one tower might be defended. The who's charging in, but... Wings are starting to gain a foothold in this game. And remember, MVP, one loss away from that lower bracket. Wings want to secure that $2 million. You know what's really scary, Mott? Wings might win with a normal draft. That's... <laughs> then they can win pretty much every way under the sun. For the draft panel, that was like the end of the world almost. It felt like they were so concerned about it. They gave up. They had no faith. Non-believers. <laughs> but... I look, Febby's died a lot this game. Seven deaths, and generally, you know, it's often talked about like when Pylite Die plays Bounty Hunter, for example. It's not a big deal if your five position dies, if he's getting wards now, creating space, buying time for carries to farm. But if he's just dying a lot and you're constantly trying to fight, it does come back to hurt you. It's, they're not getting extra track gold with some of these kills. QO went for the Dominator, but now back into BKB. Bounty Hunter's deaths add up this game because he's not really creating space as of late when he dies. He's just giving them gold for free. Some deep wards, but not wards that have been converted to kills, so Febby needs to be careful here. Ooh, TP, but they don't see it. Blink is going to be able to get out. No sure can Febby to be able to stop it. At what point do you say for MVP, okay, well, we're sick of fighting. We need to maybe farm and, and uh, stay ahead. I don't know if they are, are we going talking go. about the same team? I mean, I know it sounds implausible, but Dyer's middle tower they have the attack. ability to farm with some of these heroes. You want to be more careful when wings have their big cooldowns. So Chrono is up currently, Earth Splitter's ready, Static Storm, everything is available for wings. That's where you don't want to hyper-aggressively dive into the enemy team, plus they don't have Aegis, so fighting around the ultimate cooldowns and fighting around the Aegis timing, those are the two big factors that will keep MVP's aggression in check for now. But Forev has the blink, I think we saw that in the last fight, so there is some combo potential with that vacuum into 4-5 hero charge, can set up for a really strong team fight. Charge in, Shadow will play Fury. Again, if they want to fight, they'd have to play him. Put Static Storm to Heavy Bounce yet again. Stop, killed. Uh, down to 35 and the Chrono Top. QO! Omni Slash to death! No looking for more. Charge away. Not yet. Surge through from Forev. People will at least walk out. Blink into the tree line for Forev. Jump in. Pantheon gets the back. He was caught. Can they bring him down before he starts down? No. That's tough. It will catch him! Oh, beautifully done from Eyesight. It will fall. It'll be a third kill going to Wings. They just keep getting more and more out of this game, LD. Man, this Elder Titan has been a real game saver. 0-5, oh, but uh, right now I feel like Ice Ice is the one who's stepping up to the plate. And there's a reason why this hero hasn't been getting through very often. Even when he has absolutely nothing. Right now just Tranquil Boots, win late. He did just buy a staff of Wizardry, but he's been very poor all game. His kit is so good, and it's it's five melee heroes. The stomp is going to connect more often than not. We still haven't seen the big wings team fight. That's what worries me for MVP. They they can never screw up a team fight. One really bad team fight will be a wipe. If there's a really good chrono, a static storm stomp combination, they they don't really have answers for that. So it's like wings, one more fight will put them. Uh, they're on the cusp right now, but they could start getting some real big items here. Wing has to avoid this charge. And remember, this is with MVP having a great start to the game. Like, imagine if Wings didn't give up all those early kills, if the Sentry was a place a bit differently mid, Bat Rider didn't die to Febby and constantly get dove. Like, this is with MVP having that fantastic start, and they're still struggling down the stretch. It shows that there are drawbacks to running five melee heroes who just run at you. There are counters to this. Looking back, like, God, three, four years ago, there was a, a big series between IG LGD where uh, IG was recorded after the series, and they, they talked a lot about uh, LGD at the time was facing the IG face rush. That was what it was called with, with the translation. And the counter was Enigma, just picking this hero that can dominate melee heroes because they love to run Night Stalker, Sven, Bounty Hunter, just run at you heroes. This is a strategy that has been used before in different ways by teams in the past, and wins are showing. It can be exploited, it can be punished if you play crisp, coordinated Dota. Looking like that. 
a team that is solid all around. We talked about Wings beating themselves before. Doesn't look to be the case so far in this series. They're already up 1-0, and they're looking for that game, too. And they're getting closer and closer as time ticks by. There is the Death Letter pickup for QO. Helps him dish out the damage, but he has the item a couple of times. The Shadow Zombie Slasher, Chrono Sphere. We'll see. QO can find the kills instead of dying. Radiant's in middle season. tower is under Shadow attack. now buys a blink dagger, so he's even better at split pushing and getting away with it. Also can assassinate heroes potentially if he isolates them. Yo. Seven, one, and four on the carry player. Hero has fallen behind now with only 7,000 hours. Shadow walks up. That blink dagger, but it's still looted by the blade fury. Duke will the tree line looking for a charge. Throwing a spear blank in. He catches two. Earth Slitter on top. Omni Sight will go in. Hero not done yet. Looks like he will be about to call a static storm. And it should bring him down. And it will. There is a coming in. Shadow's getting low, but he's just going to come through and be on MP now. Looking to bring down Blink one more. He fireflies away. He gets up out. MP, get out of shield it in, and Shadow finds himself another one. Good back wall, but it might be too late. Then he walks into a blade fury and dies. Four dead for MP. He bars Mod, they're all almost dead. They get four, they walk away on skin. No track gold for you, MVP. That is MVP's ticket to late game. It's track gold. No, no huge economy here from the, the PA. Had the Dominator earlier. He sold it. But yeah. with with that, with no battle fury being picked up, not really the type of lineup that just wants to be giving up kills and going late. They're not. It's not like this is Team Secret where they'll give up. They'll be down 20 kills, but they're running Alchemist Terrorblade, just planning on the 70, 80 minute win. This is a, a team that wins early or struggles to take it late. UVP did do very well early, but they couldn't quite get over that hump. And heck, QO has that Dominator. Very interesting choice to me. And of course, he's still kind of low in the network department. So damage done to Innocence, but this is not the early game. Bebby needs plus one, more than plus one to help get that kill now. They will go for Roche, that'll help stabilize their economy if they can get it, and it looks like with the Urza, they can. I don't know how concerned Wings is about two lives in MVP. I wouldn't be at this point. They've won every single fight for the past, I think, ten minutes or so. If you look at the graph, it just, it just shows all green dots going the way of Wings from a, a long period of time, since about 18 minutes on or so. What a lead. They have to get something done with this agent. Multiple core kills, ideally. Take that tier 2 mid. Try to bottle up Wings a bit. But look at the spread from Wings. It's the same thing as last game, Mod. He is diving in. He wants to kill his vacuum wall. Static Storm on top of the lost it. It's in front of him. Onto the Ice Splitter! It does beautiful work! The Ozzy side is there. And MP will fall. At least he rages. Stay alive for now. The Blade Fury will come through and the rage is done. It's going to be three deaths for MVP. It looks like his QO now. Look at the up and the time lock is there. Aegis is down. Can they bring him down a second time? QO stops up perfectly time for my side. Double kill. Shadow is godlike. And MVP bit by bit there getting dismantled by wings. You know, I remember when Ice Ice was confused constantly with Ice from Malaysia, with Ice 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 from Singapore. Nobody knew who this guy was. He stood in for Big God at DAC a year ago and wasn't really considered to be that big of a deal. He was a decent pump player that Xiao Wei saw and believed in. But my god, he is a hero for this team now. The Earth Splitters, the Stomps, Endless Control. Ursa, PA, they're just getting completely chained on and bursted by this guy. Man, what, what an underdog story, Wings. They once were, but now they're looking like an unstoppable stoppable juggernaut down the stretch. And to make matters even worse, with that fight mod, they start to get their next round of big items. Mass to complete on Juggernaut, so even harder for the PA to focus. He can remove the track as well. Already Blake has the Aether Lens. Uh, as well as the Blake Dagger. They're looking for Faith Beyond Bottom. He's got Time Walk if he needs it. He's but already he's ready on the Tier 2 Tower. And again, there's good vision coming out. Entry to the jungle is an Observer Ward on the Radiant side that Fred has to take down. Just notice their item. Three Blake Daggers, Void already has Time Walk, and a Four Staff and Elder Titan. Wings are just going to kite the crap out of MVP. We saw it last game with slightly different items, but the same concept. And I think MVP, they go on to lose this match, they may have to rethink their overall strategy because it seems like Wings has 
completely figured it out. Yeah, wings look so good right now at this point. Dyer's 24 minutes in, and they're doing so well. I'm looking for more. GP is kind of emptied into their jungle right now, looking to farm up and just find whatever they can. They had such a dominant lead early on. Three of the top four networks. The shadow was always ahead, and now 6k up on this juggernaut as well. So. Shadow continues to farm away. Now with this Mantis Tile, it's Blink Dagger and an Ultimate Orb to follow up after with. Which could very well be a Scotty here. Okay. So for MVP, it looks really bad the way the games develop, the difficulty they have getting quick kills and team fights. I think the next big power spike is probably the last one, unless they win fights at that point, is the BKB on Ursa. That's coming pretty soon, along with QO grabbing his. At that point, the Elder Titan is less of a threat. There's still ways to deal with BKB, uh, whether it's the Lasso, the Chrono, Bash, Omni Slash. Like, there are still some solutions, but that, that gives you one more, basically, tank of gas with which to work. And I think they have to find multiple track kills at that point, or they will just have to GG out. At that point, they have no momentum, no control. Roshan wasn't enough. This will be their next big push. And Likely their last if they don't succeed in some kills. This is before they lose any tier 2 towers and MVP. It just, that's how much they're struggling at this point. And they're very likely GG out if they lose another team they're, fight the way they have been. They're, they're the ones hiding in their jungle. This is very un MVP esque. It's not the nature of the draft. It's uncharacteristic, but they've been forced into it because Wings has just not lost a team fight in, like you said, 15 plus minutes. And there's that BKB you were talking about, at least for the Ursa again. BP, they need to find something with this alongside the one with QO. Can they get anything done? Again, like you talked about, they weren't concerned. Uh, Wings were not oh. concerned about the, the double ages. But yeah, that, that ward should get at the smoke of the sea coming in from Wings. We'll see. And BP can set something up here. They might just back away, but no, it looks like they're setting the trap. Maybe we'll walk up first, break the smoke. Now he's going to get caught. There's the last of Pro the on MP. BKB's not there to stack from the as well. First splitter, he's low. Top of the BKB in the erase. How much longer can he survive? The answer is not five, because he's down for 56. Dubu looking to at least get some damage strike, but it's just not enough damage. Face beyond getting the double kill. Wings. And they're not done yet. Shadow walking up, looking for more. MVP not GGing out just yet, but Wings. Feels like they're moments away from getting into that top three spot. They saw it coming. They knew it was there. The bounty hunter still gets caught by the lasso. You then Chrono the Ursa. There's no counter for Chronosphere. What do you do? Like try to vacuum them away from the Chrono? So at that point, Omni Slash just lays into whoever's in there. They burst the Ursa down after the Chrono ends. He did pop BKB, he quitted his ultimate. Still, they just kite him, they ignore him. Then the PA gets glimpsed away, so she's out of the fight. Now you kill the, the Spirit Breaker, and then it's the 2v5. Wings are just never allowed MVP to fight as 5. They're the team who's always 5v1 because of their huge AoE control and their team fight abilities. I just don't know what MVP do. Now there's a Manta Silent face beyond, even more damage, more mobility as well for him to get out. Maybe he had such a good start, he was like 4, 1, and 6, and now he's got 10 deaths to his name. So Bevy struggling on that bounty hunter after the beginning stage of this game, which looks so good. So good for MVP. It's gonna get even harder now. Wings have two Ghost Scepters. One on the Bat Rider, Fire one on Ice Ice. No Defusal Blades on MVP. We saw when CTY was playing Ursa, he would often go for that item, but MP's just not farming nearly well enough to get it. They will find Bevy yes, again. Face beyond pops the Manta, and that is more than enough damage between that and the Firefly. And he's not done. Blink's gonna keep going. They're looking for MP. Time walk. They have the corner here in six seconds, but it's not there right now. Ursa wants to come in. He's thinking about it. His team is also thinking about it in the mid lane. They're saying, okay, we could come to help you, but he's fighting four versus five. Smoke up, though, from MVP, and this might be the last gasp if it doesn't work out. Oh, they're doing this 4v5 with no track gold. Even if they win, how much gold will they really get out of the fight? Oh, Ice Ice is isolated, and he is gonna get caught. And they're strike back and back in. Go step, they're coming in. And the Toronto on! about to lose everything. It's a massacre, Mott. They can't stand against Wing. Even when they 4v1 Dyer's to find the Elder Titan, he presses Goat Scepter, and suddenly it's them losing four. Wings have... They've written the blueprint on how to take down MVP. You, you just have to take your hat off to this team. Not only did they pick crazy, they picked smart. There is genius behind their apparent madness. They're gonna go for the first high ground push to tier 3 tower. They are moments away from getting to that top 3 spot. 
He waits will try to get there first set of racks and it looks to be successful as MVP no buyback on QO or Ursa. MP not there to help defend and winks back up. Successful. We're at a point now where Juggernaut can man fight any of these carries. Look how big he is. We'll see the fight again. Charging from Pure Breaker. All four heroes arrive. No, actually, we'll see it again because there's another fight breaking oh, out. No. For him. He's lost his jab. He just purchased his duo coming in. Blade 3 from Shadow to stump stifling dagger close. Nubu getting chased down. Firefly bringing in. And QO pops the BKB and just a four step from Eyesight, trying to get as best as possible. His Ghost Scepter is down. The Kinetic Field is there. They might get this one kill, but that's it. That's the first kill they've gotten in I don't know how long. That was with a Darkseer buyback as well. Oh dear. Even then, it's still not very good for them when it comes to net worth. And they lost the lane of Rex. Triple Ghost Scepter. So, yeah. The Fusal Blade will be mandatory for MVP at this point. Ursa still a long ways off from it. PA, nowhere near. Speaking of the Fusal, it's the Faceless Void of Face Beyond who gets it, but yeah. I think Juggernaut can man fight any of these carries, even the PA at this point. He's got Scotty, he has Basher, he has Manta. He is at 23k net worth, over Radiant's two, almost two and a half times that attack. of the MVP carries. Yeah. I think he can even man fight the PA. Dubu charging in, he's gonna find another strike and kill him, but no! Patreon denies him, gets the back off, see you later. Wow. Wow. The glimpse, if they can get vision for it. Blink is on the hunt with Firefly, they'd like to find more, there should be a last one to MVP. QO, but now they actually lose the Batrider. Shadow in trouble, and they take him down. Void is, Void is trying to run now. Indeed. Looking for innocence, can't quite find him with the ghost set through there. Face Beyond wasn't there as well as head. Fuse of Blade, and now he will turn this straight into Roshan. Look how much gold they just got from those two kills. Shadow with 23k does end up falling. Wow. Oh, they see the Void, I think. They have the track up. Other than he'll manage it off. Is he gonna try for an Age of Snipe mod? He's pretty far away. He's using time walk. Charges up, gets the back out of him. He just walks his kill on the bounty hunter. Gets the chrono! I don't think he can finish off, but he can get the kill on MC. Get him, bro. He's taking the kill onto the earth. He's charging from Doom, though. Duo is low. Has to finish off this road shot. It's low. Will Kyo get the H? Absolutely. He'll pick it up. Bid the Iron Knight. They actually eat the cheese on Kyo when he's going for innocence. But again, no way to stop that ghost after back to back. They now will be able to bring him down. Three still dead for Wings and Patreon on half health. Pop the Manta going for Doom, and we'll find him. He's Kyo going in. Double and Patreon. Can he do this on his own? For Evan Sebi, both low. The stuns are there. He's out of mana. Diffuse the play going to work. And forever about to fall. Can he get it? Yeah, there it is. The gems on the deck for Patreon. One more right click and Kyo will get it done. And it looks like he makes it out. Are you serious, Patreon? Oh, QO, QO, the edge is gone, five dead, and they get the second kill. Who it's goes in there? Battle. QO gets stunned up in the back, and he's gonna jump in, he wants, he wants to get faced beyond, but he can't find it. He is gonna fall, he's gonna fall twice, he's gone twice. Only Wade would actually take that fight. They're 3v5, they're up a lane of rags, they're up 15, almost 20k gold, even after the two deaths. Faith Beyond on a shred of HP, goes into three heroes, goes into the Aegis. What other team would fight that? And they win, he lives, he's back to full health. There's no buyback. This team is relentless. Wings wanna, as you said, punish even further. Smoke up this might be the last guy. He's done a lot, but Dubu will charge in and immediately face beyond response with a diffusal blade in kind. And they will finish off the spear break with no buyback for himself. The second set of racks is going down, and MP is going all the way around behind them, but it is going to be two sets down, LD. That is just heart crushing, but now they see MP. Wayne's gonna let him go. They're also hunting Febby. Yeah, well, they want Febby instead, but he, he gets the solar crest and he's just gonna walk on out. I mean, you just finally want to fight. You get two huge track kills. You think you're gonna take Roche for three? I mean, it's three v five. Surely Wayne's are not gonna contest without a buyback. Wrong. They are, and they're gonna win. That is just the knife through your heart, MVP. Desperation now. They're defending until this this, uh, this ancient is gone. Face beyond. On the hunt for Febby. Shadow as well. Action wise. Looks like they don't have it. Shadow is gonna walk to that boundary route. He's gonna see that it's gone. Febby won't take it. He's realizing that his survival is more important. Although Ice Ice almost has his refresher orb. That is insane. Oh my god.
Chrono Refresher Ultimate on the Elder Titan. I mean, they're practically killing them with just one, let alone two. Uh, the Earth Splitter, so. And they're not even going for the Fusal Blade. MP is nowhere near one. The PA stopped off for a Basher, feeling like he has to be able to man fight the Juggernaut and the Void, but. Truth be told, when both of them have masses, I don't think you win in a 1v1. You're only going to win if you have help, which is what happened last time when they jumped up onto the high ground into four MVP heroes that were waiting. These supports are still going to be almost impossible to deal with. Stop. He will avoid the side sets it. We've entered a wall in the game after the relentless aggression from Wings, and they've decided to slow down a little bit. We can take a drink and... Reassess the situation, which is still looking pretty damn good for Wings. That's oh, an no. Agate Scepter for the Faceless Void, if it wasn't enough already. And he also has Diffusal 2 as well. About like, what, with 5-10 minutes in, I, I mentioned MVP want to fight around the Wings cooldowns. Yeah. There are very few cooldowns now. Refresher nearly complete on the other Titan. The one minute cooldown on the Chrono. Wings, they can fight constantly too. And they are smoked up, and that's exactly what they're looking to do. There's no Tier 2 in the way. MVP are in their base, no face rush anymore. He's blinking, looking for that last one, he'll find it. QO now caught. Chrono on two. QO will fall. No, he gets out the BKB, but he's still barely alive. The static storm. BKB will keep him alive. Kiku though will fall. The earth splitter MP does avoid it. Now looking in, looking for it. He gets the fist up late enough. He puts his mana so quickly. He will go down. He's got buyback and he might have to use it. QO. Back at the base, they're going for the tier four. That's it! Wings have secured top three! And MVP will go down to the losers bracket LD. They are quickly becoming the C deck of TI. They didn't come through the wild card, but Mullet, this team kinda came out of nowhere about six to six months ago. Nobody knew who Wings Gaming was. They weren't doing anything particularly impressive. They would take games off top teams, but they had never proven it prior to this event. Yet to get it done on a big stage, but here they are.